Today is a bonus video because we're not only going to play with this eyeshadow palette, but I'm going to talk about things you need to know before dating. Yes. Now, if you're new to my channel, hey, welcome. Glad you're here. I am, uh, I do get very distracted, but I try to stay on task and we're going to see how this goes. So I'm just going to do my makeup and talk about all the things. First of all, before we get to the dating thing, which I'm going to get to really quickly, um, we're going to do blue eyeshadow. <laughs> and everything I see online, I mean, if you see something online that looks good, please let me know because all I find are pictures that Mr. Spock would be jealous of. I can't find anything. So I've got some ideas and we'll see what happens with that. Okay. So, gosh, in December of 2016, my husband that I had been married to for 24 years walked out and <clears throat> I had no idea, did not see it coming. I always thought when you hear women say that, that I just thought they were just saying that, but they ain't, I had no idea. Okay. I always had heard that you should wait a year before dating if you get a divorce or something. And so I wanted to do that and I did. But even before my ex-husband left, you know, we talk. One of the great, great things about being a hairstylist, and I had a client just say this to me yesterday. She's like, Lenora, you are like a therapist to me. And I said, well, I said, yes. I said, but it's reciprocal. I learn so much from my clients, really good intel, really, really good. And it's 30 years of learning all this wonderfulness. It's been a huge blessing. And one of the things I learned from one of my clients was, if you're dating, you need to have a list. You need to have a list of what you are looking for in a mate. You need to have it all written down. I had it on my phone, it's actually still there. And that way, when you meet somebody, you look at your list and see if they're on it because if they are not on your list and you keep dating them, once your heart gets involved, your brain don't care or vice versa, whatever. Your heart don't care about the list. So you need to have your list already done, already know it, and just be aware. And I'm gonna tell you, okay. So I wanted to wait a year. A year and a day after my ex-husband walked out, a man walked up to me at Green Hills Mall and asked me out. And he was cute, and I said yes. Within two hours, I learned that he wasn't a Christian. And I had my list, and Jesus was all over my list. Well, I forgot about it, right? Well, it wasn't. It was a fun five months. I learned a lot. It was a painful five months. It was so painful, but it was good. I think, ultimately, I think I really learned a lot from that whole experience. First and foremost, stick to the list, girl. You got the list. So, after we broke up, I ventured into the online dating. Now, for me, um, this was, I've been married now for almost five years. Um, so this is, this is about five years ago, maybe five and a half years ago, I started online dating. I know things have probably changed, but what I'm telling you has not changed. Um, well, okay. I'm going to tell you that I used our time. It's all down below. So if you want to go click on it, it's actually for people 50 and up, but I was 45 when I got on our time because friends told me to do it and I loved it. It was great. Ernie wasn't 50 either. That's where, exactly where we met. And, um, and if you want to zoom in on anything I'm doing with my makeup, just pinch your screen. Um, so I had my list in play. Trust your gut. And don't. Do not. Go pay for any of that online dating advice. Believe you me, I looked at it long and hard. I did. But I'm always like, I'll pay for something if you're 
give me a taste of what you've got. You know, like it's like buying a book. What's in this book? And when they can't give you any good advice, you know, like they tell you how to, we're going to tell you how to set up your profile. Be you, boo. Seriously, it always goes back to hashtag Scholastic Poster Vibes. You got to be you. Yeah. And if somebody doesn't work out and you're online dating, ghost them. Block them on the app. If you give them your phone number, just block them. You're done. It's so easy. Easy, easy. And people are going to ghost you. Do not have your feelings hurt. Case in point, a friend of mine went out with a guy and they had so much in common. And, um... I'm just not going to name her, but I'm going to tell the scenario. Um, he said that he cleans his house every day, and my friend does not. And he said in the divorce, he got the vacuum because he used it so much. And so my girlfriend was like, you know what? I don't think we'll be a good fit. So she's not going to see him anymore. It's nothing to do with him personal. She just knows long term. She doesn't think that's going to be a good fit. So when somebody ghosts you, just remember, it may be something so small that you're like, you know, in the long run, that could be a big deal. It just depends on you and the person, whatever. And I'm just throwing that out as an example of a reason why you might ghost someone, they might ghost you. It's, it's, it's a lot of innocuous little reasons. You know, it could just be anything. Feel free to ghost. You know, a couple of times I tried to explain what was happening, and let me tell you, every single time, the guy would get rude and start insulting me, and I'm like, well, let me block you now. Okay, but back to the for real dating rules. Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. Write this down. It's true. It is so true. And you know, this, this goes to... Not even dating. What have I done here with my makeup? Am I done? Did I do a good job? Um, actions speak louder than words. This goes for everything in life. It does. You know, you can make a list for anything in your life, too. Yeah. My sister wanted to buy a car. She made a list of everything she wanted on her car, and she got it. It was pretty amazing. It was a very fun experience. That's another story. Anyway. Actions speak louder than words. Always remember that. Don't paint red flags green. Got it? Don't paint red flags green. You know, you see those red flags. Sometimes they're just tiny, tiny little baby flags. Lenora, this flag hardly matters. Let me tell you, tiny baby pink baby flags grow up to be big billboard red flags. I don't know about you, but I personally like to not only paint my red flag screen, but I like to bedazzle them and decorate them. They're going to be great, but no. Notice the red flag. It's legit. It's a thing. Don't paint your red flag screen. You can be with someone that has no red flags. And I'll tell you, I have people who don't believe me when I say this. I do. My husband has no red flags. I can't think of a one. Not one. Like, I try to, okay? He's pretty near perfect, but he does make mistakes. I told him the other day, I said, you're perfect, and he just looked at me, and I'm like, all right, not in the biblical sense. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with him, but nobody wants to be told they're perfect. Come on. Okay. Um, people will show you who they are. Believe them. For real. I don't know about you. But I like for you to show me who you are, and then I like to rewrite that story. And go, this is what they were really thinking. This is what they really meant. No, boo. No, they're showing you. Even the manipulators and the narcissists, they're going to show you who they are. Believe them. Believe them. It's true. Okay, well... I think that was it for my date advice. That's all I got. Let me see if I have anything else. It's not that big a deal, right? Um, make your profile. Use you. Be you. Please, please, please post current pictures. Nothing is as awkward as getting there on a date. and That never happened to me, but I heard about it happening to people.
<laughs> always read. <laughs> you know, when you've been online dating for a minute, and I wasn't even doing it that long, like I quit reading all of their descriptions. I totally missed one guy's description. And when I read it, we had already been talking for like a month. But when I read his description, I was like, oh, I don't love this. Um, but we still went out a couple of times. And yeah, he was a drama llama. Which is fine if you're into drama, but I'm not. Yeah. Ah, I got one. I just told somebody this yesterday. She was like, have you ever done that? I said, no, but I was prepared to. Okay, so you go on a date and you know, you know whether you can sit through this date or not. And I did go out on a date with one guy and he went to the bathroom at one point and I wanted to leave the restaurant. I wanted to just grab my purse and run out the door. But I wasn't raised to do that. I just couldn't do it. And so I came up with a game plan for the next time I go on a date, which the next date I went on was actually with Ernie, whom I'm married to. So I didn't, I did not have to do it, but I was prepared. Um, just say, hey, thanks for meeting me. This isn't gonna work out. I'm gonna go now, bye. And you just get up and walk out. So I was absolutely 100% prepared to do that on mine and Ernie's first date and I didn't have to. So yay for that. That's pretty awesome, but I was ready to. So, and I read recently in the book Atomic Habits that I think it was Atomic Habits, um, or it was the power of habits. I'm writing this down so I'll remember to note this. Power of habit. Okay. Um, that Starbucks, when they hire people, they have you write down scenarios that you think could happen while at work, and then how would you handle it? And you know, that is just, that is just such great advice. Um, so I wish I had thought of more dating scenarios. Um, I had a guy, <laughs> I had a guy I was talking to and I told him where I went to church. So one Sunday I'm sitting in church and I get a text message from him and it says, I like your church. Stalker much? Oh my gosh. That was so freaky and so scary. Okay, this is funny. And his picture was a little grainy and a little blurry, but I was like, you know, if you squint, he could be cute. I'm not kidding. In real life, he looked just like his picture. I'm not kidding. Didn't even come up and talk to me. He went out to his car and was starting up his car after church. So I walked up to his car and I'm like, hey. So he's like, oh, hi. Like, I don't know, like this is normal. So weird. And I said, well, I just thought I'd introduce myself. And so we did. And um, yeah, it was a no forever. He never should have done that. That was such, that was such a creepy turn off. Um, Oh my gosh, y'all, it was just terrible. So I blocked him on my phone and I met him on match.com. I didn't have any luck on eHarmony. Any luck, zero luck, no luck. No luck so much so that they gave me my money back. <laughs> I mean, does that happen to anybody? Yeah, no luck. And lots of scammers. That's why I say, trust your gut. Go with your instincts. Because a lot of times I'd be like, hmm. It's so many times. Oh, I'm out of town. And so it was funny. When I first met Ernie online, he was in Connecticut. And I'm like, oh, all you scammers are out of town. Um, I'm going to start with this light brown color right here. Pretend it's like a tan. I think it is. 
Okay. But don't give any of them money. I don't care where they are, what they've lost. Just, you know, just tell them you are so sorry. And I started out, and I did, I did eventually quit doing this, but I started out with, with questions. Like, do you have a temper? Da -da 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 All these questions. And um, gosh, I bet I still have those written down too. And one guy who seemed like he was kind of nice, he was like, too much, too soon, I'm out. I was like, oh. But um, one scammer answered all my questions. <laughs> That was funny. I think he's the only person who did, but it was very fun to read. But this one guy that I talked to for a long time who said, you know, no, he didn't have a temper. Um, eventually, I caught him in a lie because he said he lived in Dallas. And then he told me I, his time zone. Well, Dallas is central time zone just like me. We, we've got the same time zone. And I, so I said, you told me you lived in Dallas. And he's like, I do. And I said, well, Dallas is in the central time zone. And he, through text message, that man starts yelling at me through text with just chewing me out. And then he's like, prove it. So I'm literally, that's when I should have just quit talking to him, right? But no, I go back through and I find it and I snap, I screenshot it and send it to him. And he was still acting like a nut. I think he was married. Oh my gosh, I talked to this one guy. And, um, wow, oh, let's see, he lived in New York. And he had an interesting job. It was weird. It was like he was out on the ocean. I don't know. It was, like I said, it was interesting. But at one point we were talking and I, you know, I'm just talking to him. I don't know. So we're just talking and everything. I wasn't really sure about him. And he was like, can you come visit me? And so I'm like, you know, maybe, I don't know. And, he's, and then he would be like, I can't wait for you to come cook for me. And I was like, oh, we done. And I said, I'm not cooking for you. <laughs> and he goes, oh, okay, well, we're done. <laughs> That's what he wanted to do. He really wanted somebody to cook for you. I'm like, mm, you got the wrong girl. Okay. Scary time. So I just played with that color and then that color. And now I'm gonna go into this blue. I wiped off my brush. You know what? Let's use my small, my medium Sydney Gray Splendor brush. Okay. Wipe all the brown off of it. All right. So I'm thinking I'm just going to pop this in over here. Let's see what happens. You know, the thing I love about Fizzy Art is it is true to color. If you can't see that, just zoom in. That is a, that's actually a really pretty color. I love playing with these new colors and then going, ah, oh, I like it. So let me do this over here. But see how that just shows up as the blue. But wait, I've got more stuff I wanted to do with this. So I'm going to pull this up and out a little bit. Because really, there's this darker blue I want to come in with and have it be like my hashtag fake eyelash hack. Okay, so my best dating story <laughs> was this guy. He's the one I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave the date. But I just, I didn't know how to do it. And I have to have a plan. I'm a planner. So, anyway. We meet at some, I don't know. He was in college. He was working on his master's, though. Uh, yes, I was 45. He was 27. Uh, one of my girlfriends was like, oh, Lenora, a May-November romance or whatever they're called. She's like, oh, it's a thing. I'm like, okay. 
I mean, I was just really trying to be open-minded. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. That's what this got me. Oh, my goodness. Which is, then it reminds me, there was a couple, there were a couple other younger guys I was talking to, and one, like, he just needed a friend. And I finally got tired of being his friend because he had a lot of drama going on. I'm not into all that drama. Okay, but back to the day. What was that guy's name? I can't remember. But anyway, so we meet at this, like, chicken wing beer place. And I've told him I don't like beer. I don't. I just don't care for beer. I've never cared for it. Wish I did. Don't. He orders us a pitcher of beer. And halfway through the day, he's like, you're not drinking any beer. And I said, yeah, I don't like beer. Okay. So, he would, we went to place our order, and he was like, I'll take such and such. How much is that? And then I'll do, what about this? How much is that? I'm not kidding, y'all. Everything he ordered. How much is that? And how much is that? And um, I, of course, can't remember what I ordered now because that was a long time ago. Oh, I'm going into the darker color now. They got a Just doing this right in the corner. Just, psh, psh. You got to make that sound too. Psh, psh. Okay. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. It's not too blue. It's a little, you know, but it's good. We think we're not done yet. There's more. Okay. So everything he orders, he's asking, how much is this? How much is this? How much is this? So that kind of made me feel weird, right? Even placing an order, but, um, I order whatever it was I ordered. I don't know what it was. Oh, then he was like, no, I didn't order what I wanted because he was like, oh, I thought we would share this. And I was like, oh, okay. I think I was going to get a salad actually now that now that I'm talking about it. All right, so I have taken that lighter blue color and just went under my eye a little bit. And then, you know, you always need to just kind of tie that in. Just bring that up just a little bit. It's also like your fake wing, which is really pretty on a hooded eye. Just to do your little fake wing. Okay, I'm thinking about my life's choices. I almost feel like, let's go in with this brown and just do a little more. And then I'm gonna get it too dark and then I'm gonna be like, ah, oh, it's too dark. This is what I do, it's my life. Okay, it's not too dark, I'm digging it. All right, back to the day, I forgot about that. I was gonna order a salad and he ordered all oh, this Yeah. So then he said, he said, I can't make this crap up. He says, where did you park? And I said, well, I parked out front. And he goes, oh, I parked in the back. It's dark back there. Can you walk me to my car? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm thinking if anything, you should be walking me to my car, right? So then he says, <laughs> Would you like some water for the drive home? I've got waters in my car. And I'm like, I've got water in my car. So then, and, and these, these, this is all happening. Gosh, this date went on for forever. It was at least an hour and a half. Ugh. So then he says, would you like some gum for the ride home? And I said, I got gum in my car, because I, I truly did. And he's like, what kind? I said, Mentos. He goes, that's the worst gum. That's what I have. And I'm like, well, why are you offering me that? But it is. I love Mentos, but it loses its flavor three seconds in. And then there you go. I've got to put a little light bright in here because a hooded eye, I just feel like it needs a little pop of something or other. I've had people do my makeup before and they do the whole lid dark and it's just too much for me. I've got to have a little, a little pop. Yeah, I'm... I'm I'm totally digging this. I would do this again in a heartbeat. Okay. So anyway, three attempts to get me to come to his car. None of them worked, right? And um, so we left. And then the next day, I just texted him and said, you know, thanks for the date. Um, but I'm going to move on. And 
It was the next day that I realized those were all of his failed attempts to get me to come to his car. And I think he thought a little bounce wow, wow was going to happen in his car, but it was not. And it was so funny. We laughed so hard in the salon because I'm like, you know, I mean, I'm 40. I was 45 at the time, right? I'm like, you want me to come to your car? You need to offer me wine and chocolate covered strawberries, not water and gum. <laughs> Maybe that works with the kids in school, <laughs> but it's not working with a grown woman with two grown kids. So, anywho, yeah, that was very interesting. And I quit talking to younger guys at that minute. And I learned, you know, I'm from the South. I learned that I really need a guy with a Southern accent. So the first time I spoke with Ernie, perfect Southern accent. Hey, Jojo. Did you go for a walk? He just slobbered on my arm. So some things you figure out. You know, I thought it would be fun to date somebody from another country, but everybody I talked to from another country was a scammer. So let me know your experiences with online dating. I know you have fun stories because I had one guy, I have only told, I believe, I don't want to be telling a story. I think I've only told one person. It's my business partner, Natasha. I had one guy say something to me that I have never heard. I did not know was physically possible. And Natasha didn't even know where to put it. I, I just said he let his freak flag fly. And did you know there's a song called Freak Flag Fly or something like that? Like, I didn't even know it was a saying, but that is what happened. I had one guy on the phone. We were texting, and he let his freak flag fly. And it was funny because before I blocked him, because I, I guess I block and delete. Maybe before I deleted him, I went back and looked at the messages because I'm like, was I not clear in my text messages? But no, I was. I was like, oh, I don't like the, line, the way this conversation is going. And he just kept on like I wasn't saying that. Oh, my gosh. This is a funny walk down memory lane. Yeah. I had one girlfriend, and she said, go on a date with everybody. If you think they're okay, you could become friends. And actually, the first guy I went on a date with, um... We, we were kind of friends, but you know, really I was looking to date somebody. I wasn't looking to make friends. So we eventually quit talking and he was really looking to date somebody too. But I decided after that, it took me a little while, but I decided after that, I'm only going to go on dates with people I want to go on dates with. Yeah. I'm not just going to go on a date with everybody. But, oh, also some of the best advice I received was um, you don't want to be somebody's booty call if you are looking for a committed relationship. You can't have a booty call on the side and be looking forward. It, it's going to mess that up. So if you want to find somebody and be in a committed relationship, that is your goal. You can't go back with an ex and just be like, you know, can we hook up? And when that guy I dated for five months broke up with me, I mean, I was just devastated. I was, I was more tore up over that than I was my ex-husband leaving. So I hashtag thought about it. I don't even know if he just said yes or not. But anyway, I thought about it. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, but I did. But I called my friend Sarah and I'm like, why am I not supposed to do this? And she said, because you want to move forward. You want to find somebody. I'm like, oh yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I do. And one day, you know how life is weird. One day I was just driving down the road and I wanted to call him so bad. And I just, I just got mascara on the side of my face and I just prayed and prayed and I just kept praying and praying and praying. And it was funny. Well, hello. I got mascara everywhere. I just kept praying and praying and praying. And it was like a couple of hours later that I realized I never did call him. And I didn't even realize when the temptation went away. So kids, when you get mascara all over your face, I mean, I'm glad it's not 
on my eyeball. You know, I mean, <laughs> that's good. But when you get it on your face, once it dries, now this Victoria Beckham does not do this as well. Oh, well, look at that, it just did it. I don't know if this is, this may be too wet. Oh, okay, well, it just flicks off. And it did. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I always forget to put on my highlighter when I'm doing a video. I can't believe that I remembered, I mean, I don't feel like I missed anything. So there's your dating tips for 2024. Thanks for joining. Please like and subscribe and send this to all your friends who are dating. I forgot something. When you meet the right person, for me, it just felt natural. And um, it just, it just felt normal. Also, because I found somebody from this list I had created when I was 45 years old. Ernie is the opposite of my ex-husband. And when you change the dynamics of who you're dating, that is really, really hard on your brain. So, thankfully I had a good friend who could tell I was, I was having a hard time. I almost broke up with Ernie. Um, I, a, I just had a really hard time. He's so nice. And, and as I've said before, he's perfect. And um, he's just a great guy. I mean, he's just super. And I love being with him. And it, it overwhelmed me and it scared me. And I almost broke up with him. And my girlfriend saw it. And um, I can't remember exactly what she said. But she was like, Lenore, this is it. You get... You can do what you want to do. You you can break up with him, but you you have found the guy. And um, so I didn't break up with him, and I just pushed through the uncomfortableness and the awkwardness. And I'm so glad I did, because this April, we will be married five years. We met each other in September of 2018, and we married in April of 2019. It's been amazing. I did not know my life could be so wonderful. I was already getting the, the divorce was one of the best things that ever happened to me. And so I was already like just smiling for no reason. I love when I can just drive down the road, nothing happens, and I'm smiling for no reason because that did not happen for 24 years. And so I, I recognized early on that if I date somebody, I still need to be able to smile for no reason. And with Ernie, I do. I still... It's just great. So dating somebody different from what you're used to is really hard. And um, our brains, they want to go into that pattern of comfort and familiar, familiarity. And um, I've heard there's a book called Unglued by Lisa Turkhurst. And let me write that down. Un and in that, she says, our memory in our brains is like a record on a record player, and we dig memory grooves. And so your brain likes to jump into those memory grooves because it's comfortable there. And the more you do something, the deeper that groove is. It's got a good deep rut in it, and it, there's just comfort in that. You eat ice cream every night at nine, that is a groove on your record player. And to dig a new groove, it's hard. It is really hard, but you can do it. You can. I did it. You can do it. I'm just me. I am not anybody special. Your whole future is just wide open. You know, anything that happens to you from here on out, you really have the choice to create what you want. So choose wisely. Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words.